Would you go please to 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter? I want to read a verse. I don't know if you know it or not. It's 2 Corinthians 5, 7. All right. <laughs> it may be a new thing to you. But if, if you have heard it before, it'll be water. And it will... Uh, It'll bless you. Besides that, it'll, it'll help you. Besides that, it'll do you good. Besides that, it'll make you happy. He said, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Say it out loud with me. For we walk by faith, not by sight. One more time, let's say it together. For we walk by faith, not by sight. I see it clearer than I have seen it before. He's describing two kinds of living. Two ways of living life. This life. Two very different ways of living life. Most of the world lives their life down here by sight. And you have to learn how to live it another way. And you are blessed and highly favored when you do. Hmm? But it's not automatic, and it doesn't all happen in a day or two or a week or two. We're cautioned not to be conformed to this world. And again, most of the world is living their life by sight. But to be transformed, it takes renewing of the mind to walk by faith. And every day, you'll be challenged to, to be pulled back into walking by sight. A myriad of issues that come up throughout the day and week and month, you have to make a choice. Am I going to walk by sight on this? Or am I going to walk by faith? And if you don't choose to walk by faith, you did make a choice. You will walk by sight. It's so easy to go by what you see, by what you feel, by what you hear. But there's a whole lot more out there than what you see with these eyes and hear with these ears and feel and perceive in this realm. Back up to the fourth chapter, please, 2 Corinthians 4. He's talking here about the spirit of faith. And it flow, that, that thought continues to flow down to the fifth chapter that we just read. So let's back up. And in verse 13, he says, We, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore have I spoken, we also believe, and therefore speak. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus, and shall present us with you. For all things are for your sakes. That's a phrase. All things are for your sakes. That the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. It's not the more defeated we are that brings God glory. Hmm? You, you, some old mentalities that people have had, and they're still around in many places, is that if we became too glorious, it would somehow take away from our Lord. <laughs> that's, that's foolish thinking. You think you're going to outshine Him? It's not how beat down we are. It's His will that His glory be seen in us. 
to such a degree that it is awesome. And then when people begin to behold it, you, you, you say, hey, you think we're something? <laughs> you ought to see our master. Because we're just, we're just reflecting his glory. He's in us. He's on us. But it's not how beat down, broke down, defeated. We are the glorious church. Yes, oh, somebody say glorious, glorious church. church. Glorious church. Glorious. His glory is to be seen on us yes. and in us. He is to be seen. His light is to be seen on us, in us, to the extent that if you've seen us, you've seen him. Hallelujah. Not all of him, but you saw him. You saw him. You put us all together, you see all of him. Hallelujah. Because his full glory is revealed and shown in the full body. Keep reading. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. We live in a realm, in a dimension that is full of death because of sin. And Everything around us, it's born, it reaches its peak, and it fades, and it dies like a flower. Our bodies are that way. Everything around us, every plant, every animal, the earth itself is groaning, Romans says. It's, it's, it's aging. The planet itself is aging. Our star is aging. Not because God created it that way, but because of sin. The wages of sin is death. Doesn't all happen at once, but it destroys the perfection that brings about a complete renewal. But being born again now, the law of sin and death does not govern our inner man. Oh, that was worth a good hallelujah right there. The law of sin and death is affecting everything on the outside, but not the inner man. We, the inner man, is not aging nor decaying. It's developing but it's not growing older and it's not going to fade out. It's being renewed day by day, perfect regeneration. One of these days, our body is going to be changed and then it will have perfect regeneration and will never again age. Or decay, won't that be yes. grand? <laughs> You'll never have, in, in just a real short time, you and I will never have another off day. <laughs> or feel weak, or too tired to do anything. Never again. Never again. Never again. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you. Now notice the very next verse. He's talking about the inner man. He's talking about the outer man. He's talking about the decay that's going on in the outer, but the perfect regeneration that's happening in the inner so that no decay or corruption occurs. For our light affliction... That refers to the outer decay right. and all the temptations and trials. Anything out here in this outer realm, light affliction, which is but for a moment. Light affliction. 
Light affliction. Somebody say light. light. We're not to magnify problems. Amen. We're not to magnify troubles. Many talk about how hard it is. Continuously, how hard it is. But we're to see it as just light and momentary. The worst problems yeah. in life we're to see as light and momentary. Practice that out. Light, light and momentary. Well, brother, I heard you's really going through some stuff. Light? Just light stuff. And it only lasts for a moment. Some has been going on for 10 years, like I said. Just a moment. Because God time, how long is that? To him, a thousand years is like a day. He's perceiving time, experiencing time the way it, it, it really is. It's our experience of time that's off. We think a hundred years is a long time. But very soon, it's going to seem like a couple of hours to us. So you've been dealing with something for 10 years. How long is that? Just a few moments. Right? That's not an exaggeration. That's, that's really how it is. And if we think spiritually, we think this way. Let patience have her perfect work. Well, somebody's flesh didn't like that. <laughs> that you may be perfect and entire, wanting. Yeah, but this has been going on, Brother Keith, for five years. That's nothing. Light and momentary. This has been going on for 20 years, Brother Keith. Light and momentary. Hmm? Light and momentary. Our light, read the rest of it, our light and moment. <laughs> light affliction is but for a moment, working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. We've been too result focused, which is the same thing as walking by sight. We've been too result focused. Well, where are the results that we're looking for? They're out here. Right? That's walking by sight. Well, we don't, I need it, I need it. When are we going to get it? Well, when do you believe you receive it? Yeah, but I'll be so glad when we get it. Is that when God's going to shout? When the money's in your hand? When the symptoms change? We've been too result-oriented, which is walking by sight. It's two different ways of living. Faith shouts when it gets the word from God. Not when you see things change and you feel, feel it change. Faith shouts when it gets the answer from God. Right? And that's when God is pleased too. When you're rejoicing and it doesn't look like you should rejoice. When you're glad, when you're celebrating and giving thanks and you don't see it and feel it yet, that's when you're pleasing God the most because faith pleases Him. Come on, say it out loud. I... Walk by, faith, Walk by faith, not by sight. Not by sight. It's not just how we get born again. It's, it's not just how uh, we believe God for our miracle in a stressful and challenging situation. It's how we live. It's the way we live 24 7. It's a way of living. Some half dozen times, you see the same phrase in the scripture, the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Another rendering of that is the righteous one shall live by his faith. It's a way of life, a way of living. Are you believing with me? Yes. This is not as clear and strong to you as it will be real yeah. soon. Praise God. 
You believing with me now? I'm telling you, this is uh, most of the planet. The Lord said to me years ago, most of the people on the planet are either dead or asleep. He's talking spiritually. Spiritually dead, you hadn't been born again. Asleep, you've been born again, but you're acting like you're dead. You ain't, you ain't moving. Huh? And if you're in a deep, deep sleep, you are unaware of your surroundings. But there's a, there's a few that are alive and awake. Spiritually. And that means aware of spiritual things. Not just dominated by what you see and feel in this realm. Alive and awake. The scripture said, awake thou that sleepest and Christ will give you light. Wake up. Wake up to what? Wake up out of this lull in this dark world. There's so many things vying for our attention. And there's so much junk. It's just muck and junk and darkness and death. And if you get immersed in it and bogged up in it, you'll lose your joy. You'll lose your peace. You'll lose any enthusiasm. You're dragging yourself through, drudging through, and lulled into a worldly sleep. The problem is, you only got a couple of hours down here. God time. And you waste an hour and a half, and you wake up and go, man, it's about time for me to go. We want to be awake. Hmm? Awake. Read the verse again. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, you're, you're going, you're running your race, you're, you're pursuing your, your path, and there's some annoying things, and, and you catch a briar once in a while, and, and there's some things, and try to hold up your feet, and you have to shake the mud off here and there, but it's just light stuff. It cannot stop you, and you're continually making progress, and it's, it's a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Verse 18, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. This is how you walk by faith. You're aware of the unseen. The things which are seen are temporal, temporary changing and subject to change. But the things that are not seen are eternal. He just got through talking about the eternal weight of glory. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. Listen to these translations of verse 18. We fix our attention not on things that are seen, but on things that are unseen. Natural human beings are aware of three or four dimensions. And that's the tip of the iceberg. Most of what exists is outside those dimensions. Those that study physics, most of the experts agree now there are probably at least 10 dimensions, they say. Who knows? I know this. There's the dimension of spirit. Yes. And it's real. Somebody say, it's real. And if all I'm ever aware of is what I can touch and taste and see and hear... I'm living a shallow, shallow existence. Do you sense in your heart there's more? There's a lot more. There's a whole lot more. Come on, don't quit me now. Huh? Is there more? 
You know why that keeps coming up in you? It just seems like there's more. You know why? Because there's more. There's more. <laughs> that's, that's why it keeps coming up in you. It's because there is so much more. Jesus was aware of it. He walked in this life as a man, just like you and I, and yet he was aware of spiritual things. He was aware of the enemy. He was aware of angels. He was aware of the Father. He was aware of human spirit. Is that right? Yeah. He didn't just live with only a shallow awareness of this physical realm. He walked in an awareness of the other. Glory to God. Everything that we've gotten that changed our life for the better, we got it not out of this realm. We got it out of that realm. Is that right? You got it by the Spirit of God, didn't you? You, you got in the Spirit enough in a service and you got something from there. You, you prayed and you got in the Word or whatever enough until you got it. You got direction from there. Hallelujah. You got a pattern of what to do from there. You, you got something. We don't have to wait long periods of time to get little pieces from there. We can get a lot from there. Every day. Somebody say every day. Every day. We can, we can have a whole. And the time is here. Where that one realm overflows into the other. We're. Tasting of the powers of the world to come. It's, it's normal operation past this life. It's just normal how you operate. You can fly without an airplane. Somebody said, that's nuts. Jesus crossed the lake without a boat. As a man. Well, oh, somebody say, as a man. And as proof that it wasn't limited to the man Christ, Peter did it for a few minutes too. Didn't he? But then he let this realm pull him back in. Can you see that? He let this pull him back in. The flesh will hold us out if we let it. We can live a shallow existence only aware of what the unsaved are aware of. What we see, what we feel, what others are doing in this little realm. Hallelujah. He said, we fix our attention not on things that are seen, but on things that are unseen. Somebody say, we fix our attention. We fix our attention. We fix our attention. Have you ever heard the term, they're so heavenly minded that they're no earthly good? Hmm? That's an untrue term. You can't be too heavenly minded. Now you can be too goofy minded. <laughs> but you can't be too heavenly minded. The thing that will make you the most good in earth is being heavenly minded. Brother uh, Smith Wigglesworth said, and I heard Brother Hagen say a similar thing. What he'd, what he'd do is he'd pray and build himself up in the spirit in the afternoon before a service and then he'd go out and just act out what he saw. Well, he saw something from heaven. Yes. He got something from there. Amen. Come on, can you see that? Yeah. Was that some earthly good? Yes. yes. Colossians 3, are you there? 
I didn't tell you, did I? <laughs> of course, tapping into the unseen realm, you could have picked up ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> Colossians 3 1. Well, let me, let me finish that. You know, prior to this hour, when some freedoms are allowed in other countries to preach the gospel, I, I've heard of accounts where underground churches, because of so many spies and everything else, they wouldn't announce their place of meeting or time. <laughs> and unless you picked it up in prayer, you wouldn't know where to go. And yet, time after time, groups would show up at the same place. <laughs> now some people think that, they, they think, oh, I don't know if I even believe that. Listen, that's not far-fetched. We've become too dependent on the natural. Hmm? Especially our generation. Got too many devices. We can set alarms for everything. We can Google it. Are you listening? A lot of times, if we'd pause, we'd know leave that device alone. Check here. Right? Don't, don't let anything be a crutch mm -hmm. that I have to use this. I know <laughs> Brother Hagen, uh, this back in 80, what was this, 84 or so, I got one of my first computers and I got a Bible program. <laughs> it was primitive. It was, we had a 20 meg hard drive. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> And you could go make you a cup of tea while it looked up a, a word. <laughs> but we were so excited, you know. Cause it, and uh, so he came by the office one day and he wanted to see it. And I said, I was going to show him how to use it. He said, mm, nah. He said, I got my computer right here. <laughs> and of course, could quote half the New Testament. Yeah, yeah. You got to watch about relying on things out here, anything out here, and it being a crutch and not depending on the helper who actually does know everything. And you don't have to sift through three, my, three million hits. He'll just take you to the one you need to know about. <laughs> huh? My, my, my. Aware of him. Not outside aware. Inside aware. God inside. Holy Spirit inside. Aware. Now we're still talking about walking by faith. This is walking by faith. And it is so different from walking by sight. In Colossians 3.1, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Instead of thinking about what a mess I'm in, I need to think about I'm sitting with Christ. All right. <laughs> At the right hand of the Father. Set your affection, or that's the word, margin says mind, on things above, not on things on the earth. For you're dead. Somebody, you, think, you think that natural life's going to make it? No. No, it's dead. I count it dead. And your life is hid with Christ in God. You can't be too heavenly minded. Now there's, there's people that have done goofy things in the name of being spiritual, but if you know the Spirit, you recognize it as goofiness. It won't make you dull to where you can't understand and where you miss things that you need to get in the natural. The opposite is true. He'll alert you when you need it. Not for all the other stuff. 
and you'll rest in between time. Not wearing yourself out. <laughs> Laboring and struggling in the natural through a tedious, tedious process of elimination. He can just take you to the point. You don't have to date a hundred people <laughs> to find Mr. Right or Miss Right. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> you don't have to pastor five churches unsuccessfully That's right. to find the right one. Praise God. You don't have to go through 20 staff that you hire and fire yeah. to get the right one. Praise God. That's not being led. <clears throat> huh? We don't have to go through four or five of these vendors to get the right one. A lot of times if, they, when, if things go wrong, people didn't do what they were supposed to do, it wasted money, instead of jumping on them, we need to look in the mirror. Why'd you get them to start with? Why didn't you hear from the Lord? Hmm? Yeah. A characteristic of spiritual people is that they take responsibility. Yeah. Uh -huh. Babies are always blaming somebody else. And don't misunderstand me. People can start off right and wind up doing their own thing. Right. Judas, for example. Uh -huh. Jesus picked him. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but so much of trouble that folks experience is because of not being led. We've all made mistakes. Yeah. Hmm? That's right. But we don't have to walk by sight. We don't have to, we don't have to just walk by somebody's resume. <laughs> hmm? We're not to be led by opportunities. We're not to be led by needs. Are y'all with me? Well, this is a great need. Well, that's not a leading. It's a great opportunity. It's not a leading. Mm -hmm. right, right, right. We need to be led internally, yeah, that's right, that's right. not externally. Yes, yes. Led by the Spirit, yes, yes. by the witness of the Spirit, and just walking by faith in that, because again and again, it'll look like it's maybe not as good as this opportunity, but that's just because you don't know. Thank God for the leading of the Holy Spirit. Thank God for the ability to walk by faith. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go back to 2 Corinthians, please. Say it out loud as you go back. I walk by faith, I walk by faith. Not, by sight. not by sight. Say it again. I walk by faith, I walk by faith. Not, by sight. not by sight. Now, the prior verse describes this. We look not at the things that are seen. That's how you walk by sight. You're just going by what you see, what you hear, what you feel. I don't claim that Phyllis and I have gotten every, every decision right in ministry, but again and again, the ones you see that you did get right, it's because you didn't go by what you saw. Amen. Amen. You went by what you got in here. Yes. You didn't go by the outside. Yeah. You went by the inside. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you'd have been led by money, you'd have done something else. If you'd have led by what other people thought, you'd have done something else. If you'd have been led by opportunities or needs. Oh, but when you're led by the inside, the Lord knows the end from the beginning. He knows you. He knows things nobody can know. You can't do enough market research. You just can't find out enough. Because for one thing, you don't know the future. Hmm? But the Holy Spirit knows exactly where you should be, what you should be doing, who you should be hooked with. You've got to walk by faith. If the main thing is uh, how much money you're going to get, or if the main thing is that if they'll let me do what I want to do, <laughs> 
Or if the main thing is what kind of title they'll let me have, job description, you can miss it. You can miss it. I walk by faith. Say it out loud. I walk by faith. Not by what I see. Not by what I'm hearing. Jesus said, don't judge according to appearances, but judge righteous judgment. The scripture said, the Lord doesn't see as man sees. Man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord sees the heart, spirit, spirit, spirit. There are some amazing things. Go, go to Hebrews for time's sake, just just. Jump over there now. Hebrews 11. The Bible talks about eyes that see and ears that hear and hearts that understand. Jesus would say more than once, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. Well, what does that mean? I mean, most of the crowd had physical ears and was hearing the way sound waves bounce off their, their ears. But uh, what does that mean? You hear in another dimension. Yes. All right. yes. You hear it in the spirit. Mm -hmm. You see in another dimension. Mm -hmm. Look, how do you look at things that are not seen? <laughs> if, you, if it's not seen, how do you see it? Yeah. Yeah. By faith. By faith. This is a little different, but you're going to help me with this, right? You already are. Hebrews 11, are you there? Verse 1. Now, faith is the substance. That word means confidence and assurance. It also means essence. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things what? Not seen. Not seen. Hoped for has to do with future. Not seen has to do with spirit. So, he's talking about time and light. The only way you can see anything is with light. If you're expecting it, it's a time element. Everybody say time, time. and light. These are dimensions. And faith is how you access these dimensions. When you walk by faith, you're no longer limited to how time passes in this realm. And when you walk by faith, your vision is no longer limited to the light of this world. Mm. <laughs> Notice how this flows together. Faith is the substance or the essence of things hoped for. Now let me, before we go further, let me show you why I use the word essence. You, you're going to need to hold your place there and because uh, we're not done. And just back up to the first chapter of Hebrews. Hebrews 1 and 3 says, Jesus being the brightness of God's glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, 
when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of majesty on high, which is where Colossians said our mind should be. Remember that? On, on things above, where Christ sits at the right hand of majesty. And we've been seated together with him. And who are we seated with? We are with the Word made flesh. We're with God manifested in the flesh. Listen to the complete Jewish Bible translation of verse 3. The, the CJB. It says, the sun is the radiance of the Shekinah. The very expression of God's essence. That word essence? Same Greek word in Hebrews 11.1, 1, substance. Faith is the substance. Here it's essence. Other places it's confidence. But don't underestimate divine confidence. It's creative power. Notice the rest of the verse. The very expression of God's essence upholding all that exists by His powerful Word. Those that study physics, they puzzle about what holds the atoms together. People have developed ideas of dark energy and dark matter. But honey, it ain't dark. <laughs> it just can't be seen with these eyes. It's actually the opposite of dark. It's light. It's light energy. Most of the energy of light we can't see. Now, you hear folks so like, I don't believe in things I can't see. That's just being foolish. You don't have to go very far. Your dog hears things you don't hear. <laughs> Is that right? Are you going to say it doesn't exist? Huh? <laughs> They're all, even in this dimension, they're both sides of the spectrum that we can't see. We can't hear. We don't see ultraviolet. It's there. It's a whole spectrum of light. We don't even see it. Elephants hear things we don't hear. Whales hear things we don't hear. There are frequencies both above and below. A whole range of things. It's here. And that's just this dimension. <laughs> the spirit realm. God is light. We have very little idea what that means. Light is not just something you can read your book by. It lights expression. If Jesus is the express image or essence, He is the Word. And all things were created by light expressed through Word. The release of it through Word. Hallelujah. When we realize how much there is besides what we see and feel, we can, we can have our mind on that and not just this and begin to be more aware of it. And one of the reasons why He gave us the Holy Spirit, He's a constant indweller in us. Yielding to the Spirit, speaking in the Spirit, speaking in tongues and prophecy and psalms and hymns and spiritual songs causes us to be more aware of that realm. Thank you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the more aware we are of that realm, the easier it is for us to get things from that realm. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, somebody say, Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. If we realize the truth, we'd quit letting the junk of this world occupy our time and our mind. We'd look at it in disgust and go, No. I want the higher stuff. I want to see that. I want to hear that. I want to know that. I want to touch that. I want to experience that. And what it is, is to walk like Jesus walked. Is it possible for you and me to walk like the master walked? It is. It's, 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 it's why he gave us the example. He that says he abides in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. John said it. Didn't he say, if you believe on me? Yes. The works I do, you'll do also. Did did he, was was he tasting of the powers of the world to come? That's for us. Not all of it, but some of it. Tastes of it. Your young men will have visions. Your old men will dream dreams. I'll pour out my spirit. Not just on the fivefold men. I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. 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 I know there have been people that have put on stuff and tried to manufacture stuff and said they seen, saw things and they didn't see and it prophesied and it wasn't God. I know that. I know that. Don't let that cause you to despise the real. Because there is the real. There is the real. Hallelujah. Where are you? (laughs) Hebrews 1, you were, right? Go back to Hebrews 11, please. The sun is the radiance of the Shekinah. He's the very expression of God's essence upholding all that exists by His powerful Word. Now notice how that flows right in with this in chapter 11. Chapter 11, verse 3. 11 and 3. Through faith, through what? Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed. That means perfectly formed and completed. Actually, the same word is translated perfectly joined together, like the body of Christ. The Lord uses the same flows in more than one aspect of His creation because they are perfect. You can't improve on them. Some things would be true about the creation of the universe would be true about the body of Christ, the formation of the body of Christ. In fact, the scripture says in time to come, we will shine and we will differ like stars in glory. You will. It might not look like it right now. (laughs) And the world does not know and see who we are. But imagine, how many would say I've grown some in the last 20 years, last 30 years? Huh? Imagine if you continued for another 10,000 years. Now imagine that the rate of development was off the chart compared to down here because no hindrances, no restrictions, and you're building on a much higher place all the time. There's going to come a time when created beings and beings high and low will know just by seeing you, you are a son of God. Praise God. Because of the essence, the glory. <laughs> We're in our early, early stages right now. 
<laughs> early, early. When, he, when the Lord says, my little children, it's not a figure of speech. <laughs> it's not, we are. <laughs> Compared to his age and experience, what's a hundred years? It's just. Keep reading. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed. They were perfectly joined together by the Word of God. And that's, that's what upholds the power of that Word is what keeps the atoms together. It keeps gravity working. It keeps the planets in orbit. So that things that are seen were not made of things that do appear. Now this is amazing. Uh, Mr. Einstein's famous equation, E equals MC squared, has to do with this. I say, what? Yeah. That energy can become matter, can become energy. This is held together by energy. Jesus came through walls with his glorified body. Why? Because all energy's got to do is just. Wow. Spread out, go through, regroup. Mm -hmm. Energy. That's why it ain't no big thing. Right. For the anointing, right. the power of God, right. which is divine energy, mm -hmm. to go into a body and become a kidney. Yes. 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 God. Yes. All this is made out of energy anyway. I don't pretend to understand all this. It's amazing. Who God is. What He is. What He has created. And I believe He wants a people that will work with Him. That will walk with Him. That will work with His Holy Spirit. Not be afraid. Not be afraid of the power of God. There are those who they, they claim a form of godliness but they deny the power. Why? Because the power is not natural. It's different than what we've known and experienced. It's going to be different. Things are not going to happen exactly like you would think or, or, or I had planned. And we just need to know Him well enough to know if it's a spirit, then hold on. Don't get scared. Yeah. It'll be okay. Yeah. Like one meeting, the power of God fell, and some people fell out on the floor, and these people had never seen anything like that. Mm -hmm. This was totally new. And, and one of them said, what, what's wrong? What's wrong? And, and, and the minister who knew God but hadn't experienced this, they said, well, just, just wait, just wait. So said, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? They said, just wait and see who gets the glory. That's right. And so after several minutes, the person got up with the glory of God on them. They, they said, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank, he said, it's God. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> who gets the glory? Not the man. Not the woman. Not the ministry. Not the church. Not the denomination. Yes. Come on, are y'all with me? Yes. Who gets the glory? Yes. He gets the glory. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Through faith, this is Weymouth's translation. Through faith we understand that the worlds came into being and still exist at the command of God so that what is seen does not owe its existence to that which is visible. 
Somebody said the Lord made, made everything, he made all this out of nothing. Not true. That's not true. Didn't say he made it out of nothing. His power is something. His power can become matter. Has. You're sitting on it. But the power of God can change any of it in a moment of time. It responds to our faith. Our faith. Would you tolerate some people calling you strange? <laughs> to see some mighty miracles? Would you? Would you tolerate people who don't understand it preaching against your church? And going, man, they're nuts over there. They see things, they... they Hmm. I'm not talking about pretend stuff and goofy stuff. I'm talking about real things. Would you, would you, they that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer some persecution. It'll be talked about. Hmm. I had the Lord say to me some years ago, I was in the floor praying, Lord, I, I want more revelation. I want more revelation. I want more revelation. It was at 2 o'clock in the morning, and he said, I'm going to give it to you, but you'll be persecuted for it. I thought, oh. I, wouldn't, I, wasn't, I, wasn't, I wasn't really asking for that. But then you go back. Was Paul persecuted for anything he preached? Was Jesus persecuted for what he preached? If you want to advance in the kingdom of God, Hallelujah. Then you got to be willing to preach. Yes. Teach yes. the truth. Yes. Even if not everybody's preaching that or teaching that. Aren't you thankful for those that have gone before us and have done it? Hallelujah. You know, when Brother Hagin first started laying hands on people to be filled with the Spirit, he was talked about. It was not done. It was not done. Who do you think you are? You an apostle? You one of the twelve? See, that sounds strange to us. One of the men at the turn of the century that preached Acts 2-4. People followed him from services and threatened to kill him. I'm just talking about preaching, being filled with the Spirit, speaking in other tongues. Well, we're not supposed to stop. We're supposed to advance. We're supposed to continue. We're supposed to come up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there a realm that is real as this realm? More real than this realm? Angels are real. The Holy Spirit is real. The glory of God is real. Hallelujah. You don't have to see it with these eyes to experience it either. Stand on your feet. That's enough for tonight. Stand on your feet. (laughs) Oh, hallelujah. Let's lift our hands. Let's give glory to God. Father, we worship you. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We adore you. We magnify you. 